diminishing returns. Does it really matter? Is it really that big of a deal? When you jump into a company or manufacturer and you come in at their entry level product, their flagship entry level product, and then you step up a tier to maybe something that they offer next in the lineup, maybe at twice the price. Is it worth it? Let's talk about that today. If you watched my review on the Dyne Audio Emmet 50s, uh, you would know there's a couple reviews on them. Go check it out. Absolutely fantastic speaker. Um, we have in for review now the Evoke 50s, which are the next step up in the lineup uh, of the Dyne Audio offerings in that uh, floor standing uh, space. The Emmet 50s come in just over $2,000. I think they're about $2,500 a pair. Uh, these Evoke 50s come in at $5,500 a pair. So over twice the price, basically, uh, for a speaker that on the outside looks very, very similar. Let's get into some of the details and we'll talk about why I think that the level of diminishing returns is really non-existent in this space. It's all based kind of off the user, the consumer, uh, what your goals are, what your expectations are. And let's get into this Evoke 50 because it is a really impressive offering from Dyne Audio. All right, so here's your Evoke 50. You can see uh, this is in our setup here. I think we're running the uh, Pecan Pie Plus uh, Streamer Premium. Uh, Orchard Audio Class D Ganfet amplifier uh, and a simple pair of really nice AF Audio speaker cables uh, and just look at those beautiful things. I mean, if that is not a beautiful speaker, I don't know what is. Very basic, clean lines. Uh, they just look fantastic. It comes in a multitude of colors. This one we got uh, is kind of that light oak. Uh, and some of the specs on this thing, this, this is a really impressive speaker in the way kind of what it performs and how it pairs with stuff. Uh, compared to the uh, Evoke 50s that we had, uh, the or, or compared to the the uh, uh, Emmet 50s that we had, sorry, uh, these Evokes come in at about 87 dB sensitivity. So they are a little bit more sensitive uh, than the Emmet 50s. So when you're comparing these two, talking about kind of what we're getting for our money, uh, these are going to be uh, a little bit less amp bound or amp amp specific so you can play these with a lower watt amplifier we actually put the first watt f7 uh, which is a 20 watt class a amp uh, and it performed absolutely fantastic so being that they are a little bit more sensitive than the emmet 50s you're going to have um, you're going to have some good options there uh, so 87 db sensitive uh, they're calling for um, four ohms uh, base reflex rear ported. So if you look at this as we move through some of these photos, uh, you will see that these are very similar in the front to the Emmet 50s. But when we get to the back, there's some differences in the porting uh, and all of that stuff. So three-way um, build, basically. And these things aren't really small, almost 60 pounds uh, per speaker. So they are substantially uh, heavier than the Emmet 50s. And we'll talk about that uh, and why as we move forward here. Um, so kind of moving through this stuff, uh, here's some, okay, this one we actually got the uh, Star Crimson Ultra. This is about a $4,000 uh, Class D uh, Ganfet amplifier. Absolutely phenomenal. The thing about the Emmets is they are a musical speaker, very capable speaker and a really overall balanced speaker. So they play well with a lot of different applications. I mean, you can put some Class A on these. They sound fantastic. You can put some Class D Ganfet, some nice uh, Class A, B. Uh, we had all kinds of stuff on this. And we'll get into some of the sound differences and amplifications as we move forward here. Okay, so here they are uh, next to the uh, Emmet 50s. So this is going to be some of the differences that you're going to kind of start to notice. So we notice that the Emmet 50 is just basically a square uh, cabinet. Uh, you can see that they have their signature uh, outrigger feet. Uh, they're all the same. They bolt onto the bottom. They work really well. They've got a rubber uh, foot on the bottom of them. So if you were putting them on a hardwood or something like that, you're already set and rocking and rolling, or you can screw the spikes into them. If we look at the front baffle, it looks very, very similar, but do not be fooled. These are very, very different speakers. Okay, so here's the M at 50. We've got just the standard square 
uh, top on this. I want you guys to see the differences here in these cabinets. The Emmett 50 sound and perform fantastic for the money. And when I talk about these evokes, I'm not taking away from the Emmett 50s. But there are significant differences that you're getting for your money and you need to be aware of these things. This cabinet here is built on a budget so that they can bring you the Dyn Audio sound uh, and a, a good dose of the performance uh, for the money. So these are a much thinner, much more basic, much more resonant cabinet than you get with the Evoke 50s. If you see the Evoke 50s, we start to get into some of that signature tapered cabinetry. It's much, much thicker. Uh, it is braced much better. There is a lot more time uh, and engineering put into this cabinet. Uh, and when you tap on the sides of these things, this Emmett 50, not that it doesn't sound good, but compared to the Evoke, when you tap on this cabinet, it has a very hollow and loud sound. When you tap on the side of the Evoke 50s, it is dense. There is minimal sound. It is probably twice as quiet uh, when you tap on these cabinets uh, compared to uh, the Emmet 50s. So that's one thing. Here they are looking here. Now, <clears throat> these drivers and tweeters are going to look the same. They are not in the Emmet in the Evoke 50s. You get upgraded drivers, upgraded tweet, uh, tweeter uh, assembly. You get massively upgraded capacitor parts. Uh, so although they look kind of the same on the outside, they are uh, different drivers, different crossover networks, completely different cabinetry. I mean, on a, on a next level type deal. Um, here's kind of looking at the, the back of the speaker. We talked about the differences in porting. Uh, the Emmet 50s, and I mean, look at this cabinet. You can see we've got the seam here. This is simply just kind of a top piece, a side piece, a back baffle, a very basically constructed uh, cabinet. Not that it's bad. It just is what it is. It's built on a budget. You still get all that Dyn Audio sound, um, but it is not the same. Uh, we've got one single tuned port here uh, on the Evokes uh, versus the dual ports on the uh, Emmet 50s. The nice thing about the Emmet 50s is they come with some plugs here. Uh, so when I was integrating them in my home theater, uh, I was able to plug the bottom port uh, and kind of uh, tame that bass a little bit as the subwoofers were kind of picking that up. And you can do the same thing here with the Evokes. You can plug that port if you want to. Uh, here's the Evokes. Uh, as they usually do, uh, made in Denmark here, you can see this, uh, just a single binding post. They don't really give you uh, any options kind of in this um, Emmet, Evoke, and Focus line to buy amp or buy wire if that's kind of your thing. So if that's really something that you're super interested in, um, then you know these probably aren't going to be for you. But look at those beautiful AF audio cables, man. Gosh, if you have not checked those guys out. Uh, really good binding posts in these things. Uh, super good construction. The cabinets uh, on these um, Evokes are just fantastic. Okay, so here it is. This And they all look really similar. So there's your Emmett 50 right there, 2,500 bucks. There is your Evoke 50, $5,500. There is your Focus 50. You can see the one nearest me here. Uh, it's got the piano black and it's got the uh, little different emblem on the front. They all look very similar, but they could not be further apart. I think that's one of the things that you guys really want to keep in mind uh, as we get into some of the performance and kind of sound uh, aspects of things. So there's all of them there uh, as, they, as they line up. So that's kind of a simple rundown of the basic cabinetry, uh, the looks, kind of what you're going to be getting. Uh, let's get back into uh, some of the other stuff. All right, so that's just kind of an overview of the, you know, kind of look and the integration and stuff. Uh, getting into a little bit more of specifics, you know, the, the thing that you get from the Evoke 50 that you don't from the Emmet 50, uh, you get basically the tweeter that these guys are using has a ton of trickle down technology in it. It's got that helix unit behind the soft dome tweeter that they use, basically kind of similar to the ones that you would get from the Contour series, which is you know another huge step up in the game. The Evoke 50, what it does is it speaks to me uh, all about reducing resonance. So that soft dome tweeter with that helix diaphragm behind it uh, just makes for an absolutely sweet but clean and defined uh, treble region. There, there isn't any harshness there. Uh, sibilance is not even a discussion, uh, but you don't lose that resolution and detail. It, it, it maintains 
this really, really nice detail that has a clarity and focus to it uh, that is really apparent um, you know, in that space. Moving down to the mid-range, which you see right there, again, dropping down from the Contour series, all the technology, the stuff that they learned there, uh, neodyme magnet, uh, fiberglass uh, former, uh, aluminum voice coil. I mean, the thing is built just for absolute light speed and accuracy uh, in the performance and the mid-range in these things. Uh, again, just absolutely well-balanced performance, accuracy, uh, not too much detail or emphasis where, to where it feels like overdone. Uh, just a well-balanced all across the board from 20 kilohertz or 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. Uh, one of the things we sent this over to Kelly, uh, he spent a few weeks with it. And uh, he is not a guy who likes a warm speaker or a rolled off uh, top end. Uh, and so for him to really appreciate these these folk or these uh, Evoke 50s, and talk to talk about them in the way that he did uh, really really led me to believe that uh, um, to say these are a warmer speaker they may be a smidge but the thing about it is is that they don't lose that resolution and detail between this tweeter assembly uh, and this mid-range I mean you get really really impressive resolution and detail for what it is uh, but you you kind of stay in this little bit of a sweetness little bit of a just a notch into the warmth of things uh, and it's nice to see and I think that as you move up in the caliber of speaker you know moving from the Emmett 50 to the Focus 50 that refinement without the loss of musicality is one of the main things that I noticed uh, let's talk about the bass drivers all right, so kind of getting into the bass drivers, which you see we've got two of them here. I always get like, I'm always reversed. Uh, two of them here, uh, tweeter, mid-range, uh, dual bass drivers. Um, one of the things that you'll notice, you start kind of di diving into this Dyn Audio world is, man, all these drivers look like they're made from the same material. Like, what's going on here, you know? Uh, and it, and they are. When Dyn Audio came out a few months ago uh, and helped us set up the Focus 50 and go through the Evoke 50, Focus 50 shootout, uh, the Focus 50 at being an active speaker at $11,000 a pair uh, and the Evokes uh, being a passive speaker at $5,500 a pair, uh, we noticed similarities kind of in the drivers, and so we asked Dynaudio about that. Uh, and basically what they decided long ago uh, is that they found a material, MSP, and I think, let me, rem uh, let me look here. Oh, yeah, magnesium silicate polymer. So that is the material that they use on all those drivers. And so I asked them, I said, well, why is it all the same? One of the things that Dynaudio feels, and this is their philosophy, is that that MSP material is very versatile. Uh, it works in a bunch of spaces. It's not restrictive like some of the other uh, driver materials that you may see in some higher end stuff like ceramics and things like that, metal stuff, um, where if you push those drivers outside of what they're kind of meant to do, um, you can literally destroy them. You know, ceramic drivers, they'll just shatter and fall into a million pieces. Uh, metal drivers will twist and distort and crease. Um, you know, so they are kind of boxed into a space within that frequency range where they work and they work well. Uh, the nice thing about the MSP uh, drivers from Dian Audio is that they kind of work everywhere. They blend all over the place. They, 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 they work with what they're given, but they'll kind of work in any space. And I think that's really why, or one of the things that give us that nice, balanced, overall uh, presentation from the Dyn Audio lineup. And then that, and that goes for the uh, Emmett 50s, Evoke 50s, and the Focus 50s. When you sit down and listen to these speakers, uh, it is just well balanced and blended all across the board. And I think that has to do with those uh, that MSP material that they use in their in their drivers. Um, but the absolute bass that these things perform is super phenomenal. It's one of the things that Kelly noticed right off the rip. We had him over to his house for a few weeks, and he really kind of fell in love with them. Uh, and the bass is one of the things that he noticed. One of the things that he said to me, I think he runs a set of... Um, um, Mark Audio VOD1 bookshelves and a really nice subwoofer. Uh, and even with that subwoofer and those bookshelves and blending, and I mean, he is a master at blending that sub. 
he put those Focus 50s into his room and he said, man, I didn't realize how much base I was missing between my subwoofer and my bookshelf. So there was so much more information above that subwoofer and kind of in that subwoofer range that he really noticed that. And so that kind of stands out to me. So one of the things that I really like about the Dyn Audios uh, in their bass drivers um, is an absolutely superb bass. And we'll talk about that. All right, so let's get into kind of specific uh, sound and soundstage and things like that. These Dynaudio Evoke 50s, uh, they throw a very, very big soundstage that has really nice depth to it, uh, probably uh, better than the Emmett 50s in the scope and, and size of the soundstage. I wouldn't say that it's a, a significant difference in like width, height, and depth from the Emmett 50s, um, but what you will get soundstage-wise moving from the Emmets to the Evokes uh, is a much cleaner, clearer, blacker, darker, quieter background, um, you know, with those images and those sounds kind of coming from, from you know, more of a nowhere place uh, than you would the Emmett 50s. And I think that has a lot to do with just the refinement of the tweeter mid-range uh, and that cabinetry uh, just gives you that soundstage in that way. Uh, again, a very musical presentation, a very well-rounded pleasing presentation, a good balance overall. The mids don't shoot out. They don't feel like they're scooped. The treble doesn't come across as, as harsh or sibilance. It's, it's, it rolls right in. The transitions as you move from the upper mids into the treble regions are really nice and smooth. They feel like they're blended well. I don't feel like that we're taking steps up a staircase as we move up and down the frequency range, which was really interesting. Um, overall, it just really leads to a, um, good pleasing presentation with much more focus and detail and clarity than you would get from the Emmett 50s so uh, in that space overall very very good uh, just talking about the bass specifically again I really really love the the Dyn Audio bass I think we talked about that just a couple seconds ago um, but a good punch a good attack enough accuracy to it um, and there is very very little kind of overhang or bloat or anything like that if any at all i think it's just a really tight clean defined bass um, that works really really well um, moving up into the mid range again those vocal ranges uh, male and female kind of lower mid to upper mids um, you know listening to things like you and i uh, let's see what else did we get oh the sea by airy uh, sweet dreams by trinix kind of those vocal range stuff uh really good accuracy nice texture to it you know and that all depends on kind of what your amplification in your front end is too i think that um you know if you're if you're putting some class d on these things or working with like a um akm or an ess dac you know you're going to get much more kind of forwardness and clarity and detail uh whereas if you're working with something like well what do we have right here we've got the um the atoll uh, SDA 200, that integrated amplifier, that is a class A with a Burr Brown uh, chip DAC network. And that thing is phenomenal. I mean, you talk about warm and, uh, but resolving. Um, so the, the, the nice thing, I guess what I'm saying in a nutshell, is the Dyne Audios kind of play nice with anything. And that versatility in their driver material and their tweeter assembly uh, and how anti-resonant that cabinet is really will let your gear shine through. So if you want to make this thing a smoky, laid back, analog, blissful, you know, liquid swimming in it, you can do it. It will push that through. If you want to jump this thing up to a $4,000 Class D Ganfet on an AKM based DAC, uh, you know, and just really push this thing to the envelope of clarity, focus, and detail, performance, punch, dynamics, transients, uh, it will it will do it and it, it will keep up well. So I think in the realm of speakers overall, the, my takeaway from moving through this series of, of Dyne Audio is that they are musical, they are dynamic, they handle transients, uh, they are a chameleon, regardless of kind of what you want them to be, they will be. Um, but at the end of the day, they do carry that Dyne Audio signature house sound, that musicality, um, that invitingness that, that a lot of us really, really love. Um, but if you are kind of a detailed junkie, uh, these will push you right up to that edge if you feed it the right equipment. Uh, and if you are that liquid, smoked out, hanging, just chilling analog, what's up, man, it's great. They will get you there too. So uh, 
that's kind of just overall vibe, you know? Oh, and make sure you don't have to go with the Evoke 50s. I think they have, uh, let me see the lineup here. Hold on. I want to make sure I'm telling you guys this right. Um, okay, so here's kind of here's kind of that lineup I was telling you guys about uh, if you are interested in this type of thing. So here, you can see the Evoke 10. There's just a little guy right there. Just a little teeny bookshelf. You got the Evoke 20. They got these beautiful stands. It's all adjustable. So if you kind of want to jump into this space, but maybe you're more of a bookshelf individual, that's fine. Here's your Evoke 30. Let me jump over here real quick. Notice the Evoke 30 is a much smaller tower. So if you have a smaller room, if you have a smaller room, this may be the jam for you. The way that this is crossed over and blended, you can see we eliminate the dedicated uh, mid-range here. Uh, and it's probably EQ'd into this driver. There's probably some blending there in, in the crossover assembly. Uh, and then you can go full flagship Evoke 50. So that being said, there are options there. Okay, well, hey, I hope you guys enjoyed that rundown of the Evoke 50s. Uh, at the end of the day, I probably see myself ending up with a pair of these. Uh, I'll probably put the Emmett 50s up for sale. Uh, and I'll probably see what Dyn Audio will sell me this review set or um, a set of these for because these are really, to me, a meet-in-the-middle speaker that gives me all the resolution, clarity, detail, and focus that, that I like but I don't like too much of. Uh, but that musicality and that nice low end, that bass, um, that just really kind of draws me into the music. So anyway, I hope you guys appreciate this review. Uh, keep a lookout. We are going to have the Focus 50 review coming up. And we're also going to have the Evoke 50 Focus 50 shootout coming your way soon. Dyn Audio said to me, hey, I want to see if you guys can put $5,500 worth of gear on these $5,500 speakers and see if you can make them sound as good as the Active Focus 50 for $11,000. Uh, and to do that, we've got the NAD M33 in. We've got the Atoll SDA 300 in. We've got a Hagel 390 coming. Uh, we've got a bunch of stuff that we are going to stack up in front of these uh, Evoke 50s and see if we can't reach the Focus 50s. So you will want to stay tuned. Hit that subscribe button if you want to be... Uh, uh, updated on those but yeah we've got the evoke 50 focus 50 shootout coming and we've got the focus 50 review uh, to wrap up our work with dyne audio in these floor standing space appreciate you all have a fantastic day we'll talk to you later